A man with a mental health episode dies in police custody. It's a big mystery. We need answers. Let me go to the first video. Here it is. Jarvis Evans called 911 for himself during a mental health episode last July, according to the lawsuit. Audio of the call suggests that Evans felt threatened. Uh, I think somebody died here uh, stalking us and they just uh, all over the place. And I just need the officer to come out here. I just feel like my life is in danger. The lawsuit says that Evans suffered from mental illness and that sheriff's deputies routinely helped transport Evans to a psychiatric facility. On the night of July 29th, according to the lawsuit, his mother told a deputy on scene that she believed Evans had, quote, taken some drugs laced with something and requested he be taken to the hospital. But the lawsuit says officials took Evans to the Johnson Detention Center instead, with plans to charge him with two misdemeanors, a breach of peace and resisting arrest. Damn shame. Uh, Later in that same report, they would show Evans being abused while in custody. Here it is. When they arrive, Evans is allegedly placed in a chokehold against a glass window. The department prohibits all forms of chokeholds, according to the lawsuit. No, you know, y'all hurt me. I didn't hurt you. Y'all hurt me. Y'all killed me. Evans complains of being unable to breathe and begins screaming for his mother's help. Mom, got my ID. Deputies place leg restraints on Evans. Oh, man, I'm calm the f*** down. The deputies put a spit mask on Evans' head, then lift him off the ground and into an emergency restraint chair. Maybe if you didn't come in acting act like a complete or we wouldn't have to do this to you. Deputies continue to secure him in the chair, then take out tasers. Move any leg, I will take you. Tried to kick us. But no, I didn't. I yeah, didn't you did. To... Moments later, as Evans grows more agitated, a deputy allegedly tases him at least three times. Ah! Job does, he tased me. Evans is then brought to a cell, which is when the released video ends. He died, 40 years of age. Now, when a person is experiencing a mental health episode, when they have this level of paranoia, it's all real. It is all real to them. Just as real as I'm broadcasting to you right now, that is how they are perceiving the threat they are mentioning. It is that real to them. These deputies were aware of his mental health diagnosis because they had transported him multiple times to a mental health facility from that same home. Put up his picture. Following the tasing shown on the video, Evans did not receive any medical attention whatsoever while at the jail before he later was found unresponsive at his cell, 2.59 a.m. The following morning, he died at age 40. Rosalind Henderson Myers is the attorney representing the estate of Jarvis Evans in the wrongful death lawsuit. Henderson Myers says the Lawrence County Sheriff's Office has not given given her or Evans family an explanation for why he died. Died in their custody, but claimed the 40 year old was being watched every 15 minutes. They said they were watching him every 15 minutes in their reports, but that's not true. Henderson Myers said of the Sheriff's Office claims. Uh, We're going to continue to follow this story. Obviously, something does not smell right here. Once again, criminal justice system working in a way adversarial to those who actually need help rather than incarceration. My dear brother, what are your thoughts here? we, We have to have a nationwide program to where we end up with a new system of mental health first responders. That yeah. That's what we have to have in this country, and it has to be nationwide. This is not something we can leave to the states because we'll end up with more situations like this. But that is the only solution to all of this violence that we see, because to me, it seemed like those cops maybe just got tired of having to take this guy to the mental health facility. And maybe they said, you know what? Let's make sure they never call us again. Not saying they intentionally killed him, but let's make sure that this uh, experience is so horrendous that they'll think twice before using us to have to take care of this man. That that's what I feel like happened here. And you know, maybe maybe they didn't intend to kill him. Maybe they didn't know he was going to die. But I guarantee you, none of them are sad that it happened. That's what we're dealing with. Ithaca, New York, has a great model that uh, the country can follow. Also, the Biden administration, they could eliminate federal funding to police departments that do not have a robust mental health response unit. 
No law is required for that. Biden can do that with a signature. He won't, but he could.